G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for episode number 11 of my Beginner's Primal Strike Elementalist playthrough. Now uh, just before we get into this, just a little bit of housekeeping. The Path of Exile season starts in two days, so uh, I'm going to have a night off. Um, there will be no video tomorrow unless I decide that I'm going to do something. Um, tomorrow being Easter Friday here will be spent with family, so uh, yep, no video tomorrow. Uh, tonight's video is uh, going to be the start of Forgotten Gods, and then Saturday for me, which is probably Friday for a lot of you guys, is going to be Path of Exile. Um, based on previous leagues, there's a decent chance that I play it for about half an hour, and then just decide that I can't do the campaign again and scrap the whole idea of playing it. If that is the case, if that does happen, then I will obviously continue with this series, and I'll probably start another series um, pretty quickly at that point. I do still have to do the farming for the Warlock, um, but uh, yeah, we'll get there. So, uh, no video tomorrow, barring something weird happening, um, and then we'll be straight into Path of Exile, or you'll be right back here with episode number 12 of the Primal Strike Elementalist, and... Uh, and I'll be saying something like, I can't do it again. I just can't do this campaign again. Which is funny because I do the Grim Dawn campaign two to three times on every character and it's still fun. So go figure. Anyhow, uh, at the end of last episode, I did a little bit of farming. And if you didn't watch that section, I don't blame you. Uh, but this is the, the loot that we got out of it. I got three halberds, and if I hold down control, these are, they look like they're upgrades. So this one here, Charged of Thunder. It's the exact same as the one I'm wearing. It has less flat lightning damage, 40% more normal lightning damage. Slightly more conversion, but I don't think I actually do much in the way of physical damage anyway. It has less health and a bit more offensive ability. So one thing you can do... Before I actually do this, let me make sure I'm not going to uh, screw myself by doing it. Um, let me go make another Amber. I think the next upgrade from Amber is going to be a Seal of the Skies at level 75, which obviously I don't have yet. I don't have the blueprint for it, that is. Okay. So we've got an Amber. And the easiest way I've found to figure out which one of these weapons is the best is to put the skill you want to check, in this case Primal Strike, onto one of your mouse buttons, and then come here to tab number two. On tab number two, you will be able to see, um, actually I do a decent amount of physical damage. I wonder where that's coming from. Um, let's just have a look here. Oh, it's coming from there. <laughs> 1095 flat physical damage is being added. Also some bleeding. Anyhow, that aside, you can see how much the individual hits from um, from Primal Strike does with this weapon. Now if I just take this one, and it says it's a pretty big upgrade, it says all of these are big upgrades actually, so if I put this one on, it should go up. It says it does, okay. And then if I look at these other ones here as well, let's just go straight to the one it says is the best. We'll put that on, and it goes up again. Now, none of these are of alacrity, they're actually all... Are they all charged of thunder? They are, they're all exactly the same. So whichever one of these has the highest flat amount and the highest percentage should, in theory, do the most damage. Which is funny to me because, um... The one I'm wearing... Yeah. That one has the lowest, I think, conversion amount. So these are both 53, this is a 56. Um, and it has 8 to 46, which is the same flat amount as this one. But it also has 227% less lightning damage. Or 122% uh, 100 less lightning damage. Um, way less electrocute damage. Ah, I see. I see. I was reading it wrong. This has a alacrity. That's why. Okay. Easy. Easy fix. 
Um, this is better because Alacrity and 23% attack speed just destroys the others. So um, I miss that. The ones that don't have Alacrity, um, yeah, they are. They be have better conversions. They have better percentages. The Alacrity just wins. So that's what's happening there. And uh, <laughs> derp, I didn't read the uh, the actual weapon properly. So that's my bad. Anyway, we're going to go with that one. And uh, it's actually an easy choice after all of that. So let's go ahead and sell these. Um, this armor has only bleeding resistance instead of pierce resistance. And uh, we can swap that straight in, actually. So my pierce resistance will still be 1% over the cap. And my bleeding is now capped as well. So we are... Very close. Let's just say very close. Uh, especially if I keep this add-on here, chuck it back on the chest. Only Aether is not capped in normal difficulty. So that's good. Also at this point, uh, let me go ahead and, and vendor these blues that I found. Um, let's have a look at these rings. Now, Mighty of Scorched Runes is a little bit of elemental. Um, I need the Aether on that Rhyme Frost one, unfortunately, and I think I need the Poison on the other one. Yep. Uh, so I can't replace the Aether one just yet, and I can't replace the others because they don't have poison resist on them. So they all get sold. Um, and that's just kind of, it is what it is. Also at the end of the last episode, I did hit level 58. Um, physique is now up to 50. We were putting points into Spirit. I'm going to take this up to 10 and then reassess. And I may chuck 10 points in Cunning as well. Um, offensive ability is a little bit low. We do have a chance to miss, which I don't love. Uh, even with the 8% crit chance, which, uh, I mean, it's good. It's good, but more is obviously better. Um, that's interesting. So I can swap that in. Uh, the Empowered Inscribed Braces. I get a damage proc. I lose, actually... A lot of armor. 100 average on one item means the rest of my items also went down. Um, which, I mean, it makes sense. I'm losing 15% armor across all of the gear. So even though the Empowered Inscribed Braces do in fact have a higher base armor amount, so the glove slot went up and everything else went down. Um, but that would allow me... If I put an Unholy Inscription on there, that would allow me to cap all of my resistances, and I get the proc. And then I just need to find a helmet to replace that one. So I think I'm going to do that. Um, the other thing to note as well with, with these uh, components is... Okay, this one is really good because Vitality resists, Bleed resist, and Offensive Ability. My Bleeding is kind of okay. My Vitality is well under control. 15 Offensive Ability is not that much. And I could have, instead of those resistances, where is this one? Could have 8% attack speed and a little bit of chaos res. Which I think is actually the play. 8% um, bleeding resistance is not going to kill me. Um, famous last words and all that, but shouldn't kill me. And 8% attack speed is actually kind of a big deal. So I'm going to put that on. Uh, what is my attack speed actually? 156. So the cap on this is 200, and I'm nowhere near it, so more is good. Right, uh, it's time for Forgotten Gods. Now that that's all out of the way, all the gear is under control. I believe we already chose Sulail. Uh, let me just double check that. Old Mate doesn't have a quest for me here. Um, what do we actually get from Sulail now that I'm thinking about it? Let's see here. Um, so I'm doing a search for lightning damage, and uh, it looks like we get basically nothing. <laughs> None of the armor is any good. The book we're not going to use. The amulet uh, we're also not going to use. Um, that's actually not a bad amulet, but no. Um, and the stormfire sigil or stormfire seals are, are okay. These are actually decent. Um, not amazing, but decent. I suspect there's going to be something better. I definitely should have checked that a little more thoroughly before I chose them. Um, Bismil might be the way to go. I'm just going to go and have a look at their stuff. I think Bismil probably was the way to go. 
But uh, let's just see what they've got. Uh, we are friendly with them, so I can actually... I can't buy this stuff yet. Um, so we'll just do a search for Ning Dam. And yeah, uh, Wind Devil, don't really care. Static Strike, yeah. Heavy on its Maelstrom, plus two to Savagery. Okay, so the skill bonuses, I don't think matter. Static Strike is going to be... Um, this one? Yeah. Let's have a look at the rings. Um, no rings, but we do get this Mark of the Storms, which actually, plus two to Heart of the Wild is not bad. Armor is pretty good. Um, this is a decent option for level 90, now that I'm looking at it. And then the final set is, I mean, the same as the first one, but plus three instead of plus two. Number get bigger. Um, one-handed Dagger, no. One-handed Mace, no. One-handed Ranged, also no. Um, so actually, there's not a huge amount of support for lightning. Um, let's have a look at Drig. I'm expecting to find exactly zero pieces from Drig. I am actually surprised to see this. And it has plus three to Olzwin's Wrath as well. Um, what? I did not expect to find this here in the, in the Drig shop. None of the rest of this is worth anything, but those shoulders could be good. Um, anyhow, we... Oops, did, did, let's just take this quest. Thank you for the free XP and that item that I'm sure is amazing. Um, yeah, let's go pick up our quests here. We'll do Anorex Brothers. Uh, why not? It's all XP, right? Uh, and Reputation. And yes, we have indeed already joined the Salel peoples. Okay, we are going to go and acquire the Ire of Echo, which... <laughs> Alright, we're going back into the temple. And then the uh, the Salael Aspirants as well. Alright, so everybody's favorite temple, we're going to go do it one more time. This time, not just in there for a new stick to bash things with. It is indeed the Thursday night before the uh, Easter public holidays start, so here in Australia there are a lot of, uh, let's say, questionable decisions being made in cars, and you may be hearing some of that in the background. But hey, at least they're having fun, right? I mean, hope they don't kill anyone, but they're having fun. So once more we're going to run through the temple, and once more I'm going to be checking for any new sticks to bash things with. Um, I'm not looking for them this time, so uh, there's actually a pretty good chance that I'll find some. Because that's just how the game seems to work, how every ARPG seems to work. The more you want something, the less chance there is of you getting it. And the less you care, the more likely it is to drop. Uh, case in point, the, uh, the Megara's Fangs of the Groove that I don't want on this character drop first try. And when I'm trying to farm them, it's more like 20 to 30 to 40 times to get them. That's alright, we'll go through here, we'll wipe these guys out. Um, I definitely do want to look at some of these helmets. Uh, not that one, but some of them. And as long as I'm here, I will check old mate here. And it's not him. Berserker's Cal. I'm still looking for helmets, so... The, uh, the Perdition Helmet is something that I would like to replace. Uh, Corvin's Gaze is not the one that I want. But there are other versions of a similar helmet that could be good. So, like I said, I am checking the weapons on the, uh, the animated watches. Just in case one of them has a lightning stick, I do want to look at as many of those as I can until I have a, uh, a sky fallen of alacrity um, I'm not 100% happy so let's see if we can find a better one but uh, I'm definitely not expecting to find well I didn't find a single one so I guess that's good that I wasn't expecting it <laughs> Okay, so we're going to kill Ramzul, the High Priest, again, and then in the little box behind him, we will find ourselves the quest item. 
And there it is, the Eye of Akur, or Eker, or however you want to say it. Uh, Formidable of Thunder. I will have a look at that. I think that's a caster item. But uh, definitely going to have a look at it. Now this is going to spit us out the back of the temple, which is good, because that's kind of where we want to go. Uh, that's a decent amount of extra armor. Can I get away with losing 20 poison and acid? I can. Um, do I want to? Yeah, I think I do. I think I do want to do that. Um, why did I just lose... Ah, I lost piercing. Okay, never mind, can't do it. Um, having said that, this would be a decent option. But, uh, nope, need the piercing. Alright, so I'm gonna fight my way, and by fight I mean try to run past all of this. Um, and we're going to start picking up the devotion shrines from this area. Uh, where are we going? Down here. Okay, uh, totem. We like totems. Uh, we like Multius the Burning as well. Drop me a nice stick. Nope, no stick. Although with a name like the Burning, he's probably not going to be dropping a lightning stick, so there's that. Alzua. Or Alza, however you want to say it. No good. Um, the Gladiator, the Wild School Embracers. None of this is any good. FG Shield, Cutlass Tag, Hangguards, Gauntlets. Uh, nope. Okay. And we want to talk to Kate here. Uh, nope, not Kate. It's uh, Elita. And quest complete. Lovely. So our two, two of our four quests are now complete. We're going to keep going until we get to the next Rift Gate. Uh, which will be the other way, so we're going the wrong way. But um, we're stepping in here in order to get this Ruined Shrine, which is basically a free... Uh, free devotion point. It's it's free in air quotes because I did have to pay for it, but I mean, no fight. So basically just walk over there and hey, it's mine. Uh, don't forget to bash your urn cluster here for your Leo Vinus ring. Um, unless you're playing an alt, this ring is... There are better options. Um, I generally don't use this ring pretty much at all. Um, even when you're trying to power level something, 3% is... It's basically irrelevant. 3% um, on a character that's already got 100% from the XP potion. Um, I think the the Lokar's set is another 40 odd percent. Then you get the Explorer's Pants, which you can wear with the Lokar's set. You get uh, bonus XP from a medal. Like, all this stuff adds up. And going from like 160% up to... 163% or 166 if you're using both your rings, you're just not going to notice it. I mean, if, you, if you're if you trying to absolutely min-max, then sure. But uh, it's not something that I've ever felt the need to do. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, I do actually enjoy, for some reason, and I have no idea why, um, I enjoy the campaign in Grimdawn. I tolerate the campaign in Last Epoch. I think that's going to become a problem later. Um, and sometimes I just can't face the Path of Exile campaign again. Um, there is an Exalted Stash here. This is the only place it spawns, so every time you come through here, there will be an Exalted Stash there. Well, the first time you come through here on each difficulty. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what it is about the Grim Dawn campaign that that I actually enjoy it, um, but whatever it is, Last Epoch and Path of Exile don't have it. Um, and I, I couldn't even begin to guess. Maybe it's something to do with uh, the way the characters progress, where it feels like you're constantly getting tiny upgrades and changing how your character works. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Okay, uh, right, so when you get to this point, you can either go left to avoid the fights, or you can go right and uh, and fight the giant titanivore angry dinosaur thing. Uh, we're going to fight the angry dinosaur, and you know what, I'm going to fight a totem at the same time just to get it out of the way. Turn the loot off. I'm just going to ignore the sunder because, you know, I'm huge, 
And uh, that's it. Totem done. Titanivore done. Pick up the loot. Be on my way. Um, am I even going to bother picking up those? I think I'd, I need to pick some of this up. I probably should be picking up more of this, but... Um, yeah, I'm not going to. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this is the summoning point for Kalagadra. If you haven't fought her yet, uh, good luck. But um, you will need to summon Kalagadra. I don't... Is Kalagadra her? Or is it a he? Or is, is it just like some eldritch entity that the concept of sex doesn't apply to? Who knows? But um, this over here... This is where you would summon Kalagadra. You use this, step away from the altar because you don't want to die. And uh, and then Kalagadra will like flap down from above and, and kick your ass, basically. Um, you need a pretty good build to take her on at all. And, uh, and even some of my better builds have trouble, struggle, or just outright can't kill her. So you also need to find... Oh, hello. Nope. Uh, you need to find a, a specific item in order to be able to do that. And that specific item comes from a specific chest that has like 60 different spawn locations all through the Forgotten Gods areas. And it'll spawn in exactly one of them per session of the game. So you have to go search all of them until you find it. And uh, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> So anyway, I'm over here looking for the treasure trove, and I kind of think I've gone past it. Um, I think, actually, this is one of the locations where it can spawn. And I think the yeah, other one is just over there behind the, uh, or in the section with the, the crate symbol on the floor. Which is part of another quest. That, uh, I won't go into here. Coven pauldrons, are they any good? Uh, they're not that no. Elemental to vitality, no way. Not a chance. No way, no how. Not going to happen. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and eat these. We'll eat the blueprint for conflagration. And did I see a blue belt? I don't think I checked this belt. Okay, soul weave girdle, no. Is my treasure trove here? Doesn't look like it. Uh, the, the crate symbol isn't here either. I think it's only a daytime thing. If you come here at the right time, you can see, a, like, a... You know those hologram things you used to get when you were a kid? Like, you'd pull them out of a packet of chips or whatever, and if you looked at it from a certain angle, you'd see, like, a, a shiny picture, and then if you twisted it the wrong way, the picture would disappear. It's kind of like one of those, one of those little hologram symbols. Or a new driver's license if you're... Well... Let's be honest, most of my audience is old enough to have their license by now. <laughs> the uh, the YouTube analytics tells me you're all older than I am. But yeah, those little hologram things, and they'll it'll show up there at a certain time of day, I imagine. But the reason I've come up this way is because there's another devotion shrine in this back corner, and I'm in the business of collecting devotion points. Um, also, at the end of Forgotten Gods, uh, I'm going to go and check where all of the shrines that I missed are. I know I haven't got most of the ones out of the uh, Skeleton Dungeons. Well, I think I got the Port Valbury one already. I know I've got the... Do I know that? I think I've got the Steps of Torment one. I have too many characters on the go. I can't remember which ones I did what with. But I think I've already done Steps of Torment. I know I haven't done Bastions of Chaos. Bastions of Chaos. Um, and I haven't done the um, the Ancient Grove yet either. So there's, well, there's my treasure trove. There is um, Devotion Points available in Normal still that I haven't got. Um, actually, there are exactly nine normal difficulty devotion points that I have not got yet. So there we go. There are 49 in normal, and I have got uh, 40. I think I've got 40. 37 unlocked. Maybe I've, maybe I've only got 37. 
I was thinking I had 37 plus 3 on spent, but I think maybe 37 is the actual number. Alright, let's take out Isanzor here, and actually before I go and do Anorax Brothers, let's get the next Rift Gate so I don't have to run it again. I am keeping my eyes out as well, because this section of the game, there are not many, granted, but there are some of the Watchers, again, that may have the Lightning Stick. So... It is something I do want to check on, even though I'm kind of not expecting it, let's be honest. Alright, I see the uh, the beetle den down there. Can be fun, uh, you get a guaranteed unique out of it, or not unique, um, I guess they're heroes in this game. So you get guaranteed hero out of it. I think it's one with a star above its head. Um... Or is it one of the ones with the skulls? I don't remember, I don't go in there very often. Uh, Cove and Cask. What do we got here? Aether and Chaos Res. Bunch of Devouring Swarm stuff I don't care about. Ah, uh, no. No, that's not very good. How did you guys end up with the Arcane Bomb? I had thought that that spawns on, like, the closest living monster when it blows up. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to talk to Aral here. He's going to give us a mission to go and uh, avenge his brothers. Actually, I think he says to find them. Does it actually say? Learn their fate. Okay, so we're going to go and learn their fate. Uh, again, this is another one of the areas where you can get a new weapon. Not exactly sure why I'm fighting those guys, but there we are. And there is also, I can't remember if it's on this floor or the one beneath, but there is an Exalted Stash in here somewhere. So keep your eyes open for that. Uh, bonus points if I walk past it and you can uh, tell me where it was in the comments. Because let's be honest, I'm probably going to walk straight past it and not notice it. Too busy talking. Okay, fire stick, fire stick, nah, don't care. Um, I do care about the the totem. Okay, we are actually taking a decent amount of damage here. Might have finally hit the point in the game where uh, just raw regeneration is no longer enough. Um, Inscribe braces, you look like you might actually be better. 1% less resistance. Uh, but it does look like everything else is better on that. Uh, yep. Okay, let's chuck those on. Now, what components do I have? Do I just go back to the resistances? I don't need the Chaos Res from the, uh, the other component. Ah, the attack speed is good, though. I think, yeah, we'll keep the attack speed. The reasons for the attack speed haven't changed. They're still just as, as valid now. Uh, right, let's pick those up. And yeah, none of that is... None of that's particularly interesting. Okay, so my guaranteed dynamite. We'll talk to um, Andoran here, who's got himself killed. He's been unsubscribed from existence. Let's go down. I think this floor is the one that has the Exalted Stash. Um, I think... I think... I try not to do it too much, but I do occasionally. It does also have this here Devotion Shrine, which I'm a big fan of. And it's a Fight For Me Devotion Shrine, which I'm a big fan of. Because it means I get this guy right here, who is made out of Reputation Points. Which is something that I really want. I'm going to pick those up and sell them. Um, I probably should... I know I say this all the time and then don't pick them up, but I should be picking more stuff up to sell. Uh, and that doorway is blocked, so we'll just go back this way. Uh, 
All right. Oh, oh, no. Sorry, guys, I ruined the game. I actually saw it this time. Never mind. Don't write anything in the comments. <laughs> there we go. I think the other place it can spawn is uh, is up here along this edge, somewhere here, maybe. Um, I'm kind of doing a lap looking for uh, new weapons. But I'm also not really expecting to find any. I think I'm going to have to kill most of this stuff before I go into the boss room, or I'll have to fight it there. Uh, which honestly is not the end of the world. That's a lot of bleeding resistance. Alright, I'm sold. Um, so this one is stanching, the other one is stalwart. There we go, capped. Uh, let's just go swap that component over before I accidentally sell it. And then we should be good. Um, what do we got here? So actually, I don't need that component. I'm going to keep it anyway, and we'll use it later, but uh, my chest piece does not need that anymore. Because my chaos is capped, my vitality is capped, if I take this helmet off, I lose piercing and elemental. Okay, so what was that other helmet I had? Did I already sell it? Yeah, I did, it was that green helmet. No, oh, no, here it is. So I can chuck that on there. And then... What I can do is I can take, keep the item here. Okay, all right, I know what I'm doing. I know it sometimes doesn't look like it, but I promise you I know what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, silk swatch on the shoulders. So resistances, all capped. Armor rating, not under control, but, 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 but. We have another slot here, I'll put another scaled hide on that, and, uh, and we'll all be hunky-dory. Ooh, ooh, look at those resistances. No, it's not a goblet ring, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, alright, scaled hide on the chest. I do also have a helmet slot available, which I probably should melt the face guard of perdition for that runestone. Um, what goes into a rune stone? It's just a whole bunch of wrath stones, isn't it? Or, uh, or ward stones. Yeah, it's basically, it's basically just aether crystals, but to be fair, aether crystals are worth a lot more to me than that helmet is, so I think I will melt the helmet. Um, that is less armor, but better resistances. 20% light radius? Is that a thing? Well, there you go. No, I think I like the physical resistance on the other one more. Um, the Speaking of resistances, that's not half bad. I'm not going to use it, but it's, it's not bad. Uh, same with these pants. They're not going to get used. Um, that, honestly, that's not going to get used either. So let's just get rid of... All of this stuff, that's a quest item. That'll do me. Alright. Let's get my runestone back so I don't, again, accidentally sell it. Uh, keep the add-on. There we go. And you know what? Keep the add-on for that too. Why not? There we go. Alright. Resistances, 100% capped. Armor, slightly lower than before, but still okay. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, let's go kill the boss. Now, I'm gonna take a moment here to just get a few... A few little whirly boys out. And I think I'm gonna try and keep those active. Now, Turgon here. This little ice thing. It definitely shotguns. You don't really want to be in melee range when he does it. Uh, you can see my health bar is, is actually moving. Um, ironically, I have died to the first form of this boss, I have not died to the second form, so... I guess take that for what it's worth. Um, what is it worth exactly? Well, it's proof that I'm as bad as I say I am. There we go. Uh, does this one... this one doesn't have the... no. Just double check. 
I don't think no. This one doesn't have the uh, the little wrap around hidden hidden passage at the back there. That's fine. All right, let's have a look at our devotion points. I didn't check. I said at the end of the last episode I was going to check which devotion points I was going for next, and I didn't do it. So I think I definitely want Behemoth though, um, and that is available. So I'm going to take Behemoth now. I'm going to chuck the regen onto... Do I want it on Blast Shield? I mean, honestly, it needs to be on something. 24 seconds, you get a heal. It doesn't actually matter, I don't think. That small amount of regen, at least not at the moment. Getting the heal when Blast tr Shield triggers is definitely good. So we'll go with that. What do we got here? Flat regen, percentage healing effects. I think that's the way to go. Yeah, we'll take the flat regen. Uh, speaking of flat regen, uh, where are we? Health regeneration, almost 1100. That's pretty good. And we now have to go turn some quests in. Um, I think my next quest is going to be to get through to the second half of Forgotten Gods area and, uh, and do those quests there. But let's go turn these ones in anyway. I think I have to kill some guards as well. You're looking Here it is. Was that all? I will cull your ranks. Serba. Okay, and we'll agree to whatever that quest was. All right, you, you there. Um, you're dead. Sorry. Ricard, goodbye. Maurice, um, goodbye. And you know what? Who are you? Vicon? Well, to be fair, Vicon did ask for it, so he kind of had it coming. Alright, we'll take these three out. There we go. And these guys get to stay. Um, allow them to stay. Okay, beautiful. More reputation. All lovely stuff. What are we up to with the cults now? So we've got friendly with... Uh, Bismail and Drig, we are very close now to Respected, and Soleil, obviously, we are already Respected. Right, we get some quests to turn in. Okay, don't expect me to rescue them. Absolutely not, I've already done that quest. So next mission, uh, next uh, quest is to get to the Vanguard of the Three. However, 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 uh, there are a few other things I need to do before I get there. One of which is the transmutation quest. Uh, actually, before I get into that, let's head back to the Corvin Sands because the Fetan mask may be something I want to use. Um, I, I think it's probably not, but it may be. So just here, this is the Corvin Sands Rift, and you can see this path here on the map. Uh, brings you out here to the Moor of Inat. And just in this urn cluster is the Fetan Mask. Now, in normal difficulty, this is level 50. There is an elite difficulty version as well. It's exactly the same as this, except it has plus one to all skills on it as well, and number is bigger. Um, ah, wow, I had forgotten how average the normal version is. So, okay, you you just want the uh, you just want the elite, and then the ultimate version. Um, I have actually come back to town for a reason. There is a quest that you get when you pick up, or when you walk into the Maw of Enart area. And yes, I'm probably saying that wrong. You don't need to have his quest to find the quest item for him, but uh, it will make it show up on the map. So this guy talks a lot. Um, and I took the wrong option there. <laughs> okay, so you want to take this one. I've already found it. Um, tell him where it is, and then you get XP, Soul Shard, Frozen Heart, and Reputation. So we've hit Respected with Bismil. What does that get us? Uh, not really a huge amount. Um, so that gets us these ones. Um, which is actually not horrible, now that I'm looking at it. The, uh, the Bismil belt here, uh, level 65. Yeah, honestly, it's not that great. I do kind of like the lightning bolt proc. Anyway, we've got that available. How much is it? I might just buy it anyway. 18,000? Yeah. 
Oh, that's endurance. I'll have them both, why not? Um, okay, why am I running? Why am I running? From the, uh, the Sunbane Oasis, is that, is that what it's actually called? The Can Docks Rift, yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, you pretty much run directly to the east here, and we're gonna go bash some, where are they? Where are they? Here we go. A marked rock? No. Dilapidated urn. Get some free XP. The rock can, you can kick the rock or not, it's up to you. Doesn't matter. Now there's two things I'm looking for in this area. The first one is that book that I was just talking about, the, the quest book for unlocking transmuting, uh, which is very, very important. Um, I would say don't leave this area without it. The other thing is a dungeon that has another devotion point in it, and I'm not where I thought I was. So to find the book, you want to head kind of down to the lowest area, and then from here you want to kind of follow the river. Now obviously I've got the quest, so it's going to show up on my map here, but basically you just follow the river, and then it's behind these trees. So I always remember these trees and the bodies hidden behind the leaves of them. And then you get the Tome of Ianatum, which again, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but uh, I kind of don't care. Ooh, okay, uh, I gotta go get that. Ah, of course it didn't work. <laughs> I definitely do want to be killing as many things as I can that have the star above their head that will give me reputation. Um, having access to a lot of the Forgotten Gods stuff early is really good for finishing your character. Have you got a... no, you're fire. All right. I don't care about you anymore. Rend Talon here though. Definitely care about him. Okay, level up. All points into Thermite Mines. All of them. Until this is at 16 out of 16, every point into Thermite Mine. And then we can consider either putting more points in the bar just to get more stats, or maybe we go back to Shaman and maybe put a few more points in uh, this line. This is probably what I'll be doing. Um, you can also remove Thunderous Strike to put the cooldown back on Primal Strike. This will give you a huge area of effect, but you will have a cooldown, so you will do more damage with one strike, and then in between you can take Savagery. Uh, that is an option. I'm not going to do that, especially not for leveling, but um, I'm not planning on doing that at the end either. Though it is definitely something you can do. Okay, so we're in the Sanctuary of Haran. Let me just go ahead and add my point in Spirit. And the entire reason we are here is the Devotion Point. Did I see... I heard the statue get up. Was it just the one? I think it was. Look, I'll be honest, it's almost certainly not worth the time to check for these statues anymore. Um, if you want to check the statues, do, but realistically, if you're looking for the statues, you should be in the Temple of Osea. And if you're not in the Temple of Osea, then you don't really want a new weapon anyway. Like, you're, you're kind of happy with what you have, so why are you looking? You hear that, Pikus? Why are you even looking? Anyway, this is what I'm here for. I want this Devotion Shrine, I want Golgant the Burning. Um, that's going to be a plus one Oathkeeper belt. It's very nice. And we've got the Devil's Cage Hauberk, which is a massive increase in armor. That flat physical is going to be partially converted to lightning. Uh, pretty much everything on this is really good. How screwed are my resistances if I take this off, though? Actually, not too bad. All right, we're we're doing this. Uh, give me just just you down there in the corner. I'll I'll be right with you. Now, obviously, you're you're not going to get this drop, um, or if you do, maybe you'll get it at a different point. But just you know, get resistances, get armor. Um, if you can get some flat, either physical or lightning damage, great. If you can't, don't stress about it. It's normal difficulty. 
you'll be fine. Honestly, I really should be doing this playthrough with greens only, just to kind of show how bonkers this build actually is. Um, the other thing I should have been doing is I should have got the next rift gate before I came in here, but anyway, it's fine. We will go ahead and kill Navan the Usurper here. Yep, for Drig. Uh, we're going to take her out and then walk out like we own the place. There we go. War Chief's Glory. Lovely. This is the area that has the... Oh, no. Has the hidden stash here. Um, or I guess it's a body. And... One, two, three of these. Look at those iron bits. Ooh, what about you? No. What was I just saying? <laughs> Alright, so that one's done. And we're on to the second half of Forgotten Gods. Just have to go over here and grab this rift, and then we'll go say hi to Ganava Kar. Don't know that I really need to kill him. I definitely don't need his items. I think we're good. This little uh, dilapidated urn here, this has a law note in it, so you can pick that up or not as you wish. I am going to check for the totem over here in the corner. It's not looking like it's going to be there. I think it's kind of here-ish. Unfortunately, no totem for me. However, I did find Scarpranax the Sun Eater, who appears to be getting healed from something. It wasn't enough. Whoever it was healing him, or whatever it was that was healing him, not enough. He's going to have a car running around behind me. So he kind of does laps of this section, and I'm running around sort of anti-clockwise. There he is. He runs around clockwise, and he runs like complete full. Uh, he does Sunder now, so that's fun. Alright, Salel's Decimation, plus one to Occultist. No good for me. Anchorite's Leg Armor. That is a lot of armor. Vindictive Flame is really good. Raging Tempest is... eh. I mean, actually really good. Um, the Anchorite's Leg Armor? I'm hanging on to that for sure. Now... In terms of resistances, this is kind of not amazing, but also the rune plates of Ignifar is also kind of not amazing. So at 65, I will definitely be swapping that over. And then all the people I help on Reddit with their builds, and I tell them, you shouldn't be using blues and purples just because they're blues and purples. Then they come and watch this video and they go, hang on a second. What are you doing? <laughs> Alright, we'll get through here. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to go and do the secret area in the top left. We'll leave that for another day. Um, it's not exactly super secret, but... You're probably not going to find it the first time through here, uh, unless you have the quest for it, which I do not. Then you're kind of unlikely to find it. It's interesting to me that they they locked the, um, not the Canyon of the Magi, it's a different game. They locked the, uh, the Magi dungeon behind that quest, where you had to find a whole, a whole bunch of things. And uh, they didn't really give you a whole lot of guidance for where it was. Hopefully there'll be something like that in the new expansion. We can try and find it. Alright, this little tree here at the top. Uh, you can see on the map, there's this little sticky outy bit. Uh, there's a path up here. You can run up here and grab yourself a hidden spoils. And then leave it on the floor because it's not worth picking greens up. I'm seriously considering turning the uh, the rare items off. Um, but then I look at, like, these are rare items. I could replace any of these with rares as well, so I'll leave it on for now. Uh, before I head, actually, after I head in here, let's just drop a 
portal. I'm just going to run over this little patch of ground about four times and uh, hope that no one notices. Before we continue on, uh, there's someone I need to check on over here. Uh, even if he's not here, knowing that he's not here means I then know he's going to be somewhere else. So we are checking for the big dog. I can't remember his name right now, but he's not home today, so he's going to be in the next little section. How are we doing for time? I don't think I'm going to get through all of Forgotten Gods today, uh, but we could get through a decent amount of it, actually. Maybe I will get through it. Let's find out. Right, here we are at the Vanguard of the Three. Let's go ahead and sell all this stuff. Talk to Sargon. And we will get you your sacrifice. We will kill the messenger. And you there, we will kill your big scorpion monster too. Alright, there we go. Now we're not doing the Bismail section, so we don't have to go into this first temple. Um, just around the corner here. I think we get the uh, the Chthonic Rift instead. Um, let me just check my check my quests while I'm still. Yeah, yeah, we definitely do. All right, Exalted Stash here. Uh, there's two places this can be. We've managed to get a double rare, Menacing of Shattered Reality, um, Chaos and Bleeding. It's not horrible, but it's not particularly good either. And no resistances on this, so no bueno. There is a hidden area at the back here. You get an opulent chest. Come around here, you also get hidden spoils. I think that opulent chest is not always there, but the hidden spoils is. I think there's always something here. Animated preserver. No fancy wacky stick for me. Alright. We'll head up here and go into into the chaos area. Place the eye and we go into the bloody wastes. Uh, this is a pretty good area for farming certain MIs. So if your build needs some of the MIs that come from these type of monsters, uh, consider taking Salel in order to farm it. This area is much easier to access than, uh, for example, the Morndale Rift is. There's a lot less running involved. This section not particularly dangerous either. I don't think there's any... Like, you're not going to run into Gabalthoon or anything like that in here, I don't think. Pretty sure there's no big scary monsters that, that have a good chance of spawning in this section. Although the boss at the end... Um, Onorix here is definitely no slouch. I think we're tanky enough though. <laughs> There we go, so grab his heart and you know what? I, I will sell some of this stuff. I do need some more iron bits. We've just hit honored with diamonds chosen. So the first thing I have to do now is I have to go back to homestead. So diamonds chosen will have a representative here in homestead because I'm a certain distance through the the quests um, so I can buy this bad boy from Homestead and I can sell him all this rubbish. Let's just double check I didn't miss any other honored uh, Black Legion's already done, Kaiman's Homestead. All right that's it. That's all we got. Um, we do have actually quests to go to DC and talk to Barnabas. So I'll just turn this in. It's going to be a bit of XP. Why not? Also allows me to get it off of my quest log, which I'm sure you're all sick of hearing me whinging about having too many quests there. Right. Now we can skip the what is it? The temple, the this thing, the ruins of Abid. 
we can skip that. We don't have to go in there. We're not doing the um, the Bismil quest, so we don't have to kill the bosses in there. However, there's respected with Dree. However, however, a couple episodes ago, when we were doing the Chthonic Rift outside of uh, Malmoth, I was saying that uh, if you do this quest a certain way, it changes something. And that I would mention it later. And because this is not something that's really important, it's really easy for me to remember that. Meanwhile, important things like, uh, I don't know, there's no milk. Forget those all the time. Um, let's not forget the devotion shrine. Here we go. Devotion shrine unlocked. Uh, what is stone fist? Is that armor? Piercing, maybe defensive, probably the stun reduction. Okay, so at the bottom of this temple, there is normally, and I am actually struggling to remember which way I completed the quest, uh, but there is normally the, the big uh, griffin and his two statue friends on the bottom level here. Depending on how I finish that quest, they may still be there, or there may be something else there. So I think, I think we're going to get to something else. But I'll be honest, I don't remember. So let's just go find out. Also, as long as we're here... Come over this way. There's a wall you can bash. And a hidden spoils to collect. And then you kind of join back up to where you would have been anyway. Uh, do check, if you're coming through here, this place is amazing for grinding Witch Cult reputation. Um, assuming you didn't complete that previous quest by letting the cultists out, which I think I did. Um, this place is amazing for reputation with the witch cults. If you did let the cultists out, or if you did that quest, um, you're going to get this. I say, praying that I did it correctly and I have the different monster here. Yeah, there you go. So you're going to get Catanthrun instead of the big golem, or the big, uh, Griffin and uh, and the two guards. So, we'll kill him. Um, he didn't drop the purple, although I don't know if he can drop it at this level. But uh, this has the, the corrupted head of in Ashkor, I think it is. Um, getting some reputation. Barahome rep. Barahome love it when you kill Thonix. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. So that's all that changes. That boss instead of the other boss. Um, they have different MIs, different legendary MIs. And um, if that's something that your build needs, then you need to make sure you do the correct quest. Or not do it. Uh, whichever whichever way you're trying to, uh, to get the MI from. Okay, so we're well into the second half here. And... This little section can be a little dangerous. Um, I'm looking for... I think his name is Grimoire. I think. The big dog. Spawn there. He can spawn here-ish. He can spawn here-ish. I think it might actually be here, not here. So this one, not this one. But um, there's four locations. So I now know exactly where he is because he's not been in the other ones. Assuming I didn't miss one. Which, let's be honest, is not a safe assumption. Uh, checking for a treasure trove that I think is there. Though it is entirely possible that I'm in the wrong area in my head. Um, Hellfire. Uh, how about that? Uh, nope, I was in fact in the correct area in my head. So we need to head over this way, and that's where I'm going to find my little, uh, my little puppy. Or, well, I guess he's not little. Here he comes. Just around the corner. There he is. It is Grimoire. Yep. So this is another one of those bosses that spawns every, every game, and he's in one of however many locations. Alright, uh, I didn't get a treasure trove in this camp over here. So, 
I'm pretty sure it's going to be in this camp. And up the back here, we will find no treasure trove. Okay, it's somewhere else then. Um, so I was checking kind of right up the back here. And it's not here, so it's probably over here or in this little raised camp area here. I'm just going to accept that I'm not going to find every treasure trove and uh, and I'll be on my way. And we're just going to ignore those guys over there. Just going to pretend that they don't exist and we're going to go bash some molten claws instead. That is definitely one of the most satisfying builds in the game. Um, especially once you get some chain lightning procs as well. Ah, oh, so good. So much lightning. Uh, da, da, da. I'm just checking some skills on this. No reason at all, just looking. <laughs> I still haven't actually decided what, uh, what build I'm going to be doing next after this one either. Um, there is a short list. But um, I've had actually uh, a few people asking for a dual wield Nightblade, whether that be uh, a piercing Blade Master or a Cold Reaper. I've had um, Fire Shield Breaker has also come up, so we'll see. I've also got pets, and uh, everyone wants to see everything. <laughs> and to be fair, I do actually want to play most of these builds as well. So it's just one of those things. Okay, we are going into these ruins. I think this is the scorpion dude. Uh, yes, it is. So three platforms, each with their own pillar. We go kill the pillars, and uh, then scorpion bro will spawn right here. How about that? Exalted stash. All right, look at you. Easy Grog. Pretty sure that's what his name is. <laughs> Definitely an Aussie thing to re misread. Bunch of alcoholics, the lot of ya. Alright, pillar number two. So one more. And then this central pillar, or this central section here. Absolutely flooded. Flooded, I tell you, with poison. Alright, there we go. And now, it's boss time. Now, we're still a normal, so I'm just gonna kill him, but, um... The poison on this guy definitely does add up, and if he lives long enough... Well, let's just say he can be dangerous. On normal, even veteran, with a good build, uh, he's he's fine. And this is definitely a good build. Alright, let's go. How far can we get? Can I actually get to Gorvac and kill him in the next half an hour? Let's find out. There's a Reaping Halberd. Converted to Vitality and Cold, Devouring Swarm, Bone Harvest, that's a Ritualist weapon. Uh, chosen Epaulets, uh, nope, Elemental Conversion again, no bueno. Come here, Ulga. There we go. Right, uh, is it this one? I think this little tunnel here has got, I think, a Devotion Shrine in here. Pretty sure it does. Yep, there it is. I play this game way too much. So run at the Rat God, and then you can bash your way through here. Nice little hidden spoils. Bash your way out the back there. Guess I'll pick these up, I need the money. Don't know what I needed for, but something. Um, treasure trove, and then straight into a desecrated shrine here. And 
One day I'm going to do the Dreg section, or the Dreg path, and uh, and this place will become relevant. Cal of Mugdrogan. I was just talking about pets, wasn't I? But uh, yeah, this little section here, if you're doing the Dreg questline, you have to come here and kill the person behind there. Uh, so, Brutal Decapitator, and then the Cowl of Mugdrogan. Hmm. Yeah, we're not playing pets. <laughs> Probably could do pets actually with this. Do a uh, a hybrid build. Just use the the Briarthorn to tank for you. You only need it to live long enough for the recast, and then you could just wait till it dies, recast it, use it to tank for you for a little bit. Wait till it dies, recast it. That was a nice little injection of XP. So was that. Uh, there is actually usually a couple of heroes in this area. I'm not sure why there isn't any here now. I guess maybe I don't have the uh, the negative reputation with the Eldritch Beasts or uh, the Eldritch Abominations or whatever they call themselves. What do they call themselves? E for Eldritch. Eldritch Horrors, there we go. Alright. Um, she's not there. Why is she not there? So that was uh, Dela, Dela Thornsbury will end up there. I may have to deal with her, uh, her daddy issues first. Let's just... Uh, Past these guys. I saw this star here, so have us Ember Spark. You've got to go. Uh, once more for the crime of being made out of reputation and XP. Let's be honest, it's not really a crime. See you as well down there, Ever in Flame Tongue. There we go. Alright, so the rest of this stuff, I mean, you can fight all this, you can run past all this. It kind of just depends on what level you're looking to go into, either ultimate or elite on. Um, honestly, anything past about 60 is more than fine to just go straight into ultimate. Or elite, if you want to do elite. I will probably just go straight into ultimate, honestly. All right, here's uh, Saprazor. Some of the names in this game are just absolutely wild. <laughs> here we go. All right, we are here to destroy the messenger. Um, and the messenger, for some reason, lives out in the middle of nowhere in a volcano. I'm not sure who he's delivering messages to out here, but it must be very important. What do we got here? So I get cooldown reduction, which I don't care about. He gets slow resistance and a bit of extra health. So no big deal. Let's just take him out. So this is Okoloth the Messenger's first form. Here's his second form. And once again, we do have to watch out for Sunder. And with this area, you have to watch out for the arena as well, because this is lava and it will kill you. Okay, Avatar of Mercy. Purple Amulet. Uh, does not have plus one to Shaman skills, so no. However, what it does have is really good resistances. Plus four to all maximum resistances is absolutely crazy off the chain overpowered. Also, the Mercy uh, proc on the end there, that's a circuit breaker. So when you go below 30%, you get 30% damage absorption, a massive heal, some crowd controllers. This is really, really good. Um, I'm going to keep my plus one to a shaman skills amulet. But yes, that amulet is quite good. And being a hardcore character, I probably should be using it. Um, I'm also not going to. <laughs> 
But yes, definitely should be using it. I can't do that yet. Oh, come on. You know you want to. Alright, uh, let's continue on here. There is a treasure trove over here, potentially. So I'm going to go check that. Uh, watch as it's not there. Uh, it should be just here from memory. Unfortunately, uh, no dice today. But that's alright, we've got something better just here. And no, I'm not talking about Tyrox. Sounds like a uh, pharmaceutical product. Helps you with, um, I don't know, hung toenails or something. <laughs> I don't know what that would be for. Anyway, this is the thing that I was actually kind of a little bit excited about. It's another Devotion Shrine. So we'll take that, bash these guys. Uh, we have indeed got Xanax here, which I'm pretty sure is, is a drug. Pretty sure that's a mood control drug, depression drug, whatever you want to call it. Um, SSRI, perhaps. Alright. Uh, let's actually see about spending some of those devotion points. I've got four of them now, so... I think it might be Altos O'Clock. Get some offensive ability. How is our hit chance? It's actually lower. I think because I've got those levels. Oh well. Say la vie, as they say. I am absolutely turning the loot off here for a second. Um, they did explode quite quickly, though. Um, got a double rare as well. How about that? Okay, Honed Conqueror is a one-handed sword, and it's not very good. Uh, there was another blueprint. Here it is. Tinker's Ingenuity is a belt. That is another item that I should probably be considering using because it has a circuit breaker on it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that I'm, I'm not interested. Um, I have the best circuit breaker in the game. I have what I consider to be either the second or third best as well. That being uh, Blast Shield and the Tortoise. So I'm okay for, uh, for circuit breakers. Definitely noting a distinct lack of, of lightning halberds on these things. Alright, let's fight these guys. And I think I will be able to get to um, to Korvac today. There we go, level 60. Alright. Thermite mine, I should probably put that on the bar, shouldn't I? So that's 13%. Not too bad at all. Another point of spirit, that's my 10. Um... I think I will put 10 points into Cunning, just because I really, really, really want more crits, and missing one out of every, every 20 swings is one swing too many. Um, so I definitely want more. Okay, uh, I didn't turn the quests in, did I? Alright, let's go back to the Vanguard of the Three. So yeah, if you haven't turned the quests in, there'll be nothing there. The beast is dead. There we go. I'm ready to lead the assault. Uh, actually, I've already led the assault all by myself, and um, yeah. It's all done, so don't worry about it. You guys can wait here. It's all under control. Gargoyle Visage of Decay. Um, decent armor, similar to the one I have. Offensive ability, really good. Three resistances, actually pretty good. Plus three to Feral Hunger. Um, we're not actually using Feral Hunger. Um, we can't trigger it with Primal Strike. So this one is kind of so-so. However, that's pretty good resistances on that. I would, however, I would lose the Lightning Damage, which honestly I don't care. The 5% physical resistance I do care about, but not that much. I think I'll sell that one for now. How about this helmet? Nah, that's no good. That's alright. I think I think my gear's fine. Uh, let's just check that. Actually, 
A Merciless of Thorns. Uh, you go ahead and keep that one as well. There we go. And there's no bank here, so we're just going to um, take these components for a little bit of a walk. Alright, here's Dravis. Uh, yep, yep, alright, I will absolutely... Absolutely take care of Dravis, son of Arabaruk. Oh no, I've been sundered. Oh, what'll I do? Okay, let's talk to him, get him to blast the door down. And when you do talk to him, when you do get him to blast the door down, and I'm sorry, but you're about to die. He leaves behind this little box. Make sure you pick up the Mother's Pendant. Um, oh. Also, let's go ahead and flap the steward while I'm thinking about it. Then we'll go through, and there'll be a rift gate there, and we'll go deal with this pendant. Tyrants of Alacrity. Okay, that is amazing. Alright, so, Tyrants there. Uh, the line for Tyrants, it's a physical damage mod, but it also has that 14% uh, reduced target's damage. And then Alacrity is... Well, Alacrity, so... Um, that's probably one of the better rolls you can get on this. Um, especially considering this is a physical damage weapon that you would use on a physical damage build. Uh, that Tyrants, I believe, rolls up to 20%, which is pretty good considering I'm spending 10 points in this skill to get 20%, so I mean, I'm getting more than just that, but you know what I mean. Uh, right, so we want the Corvin City Rift now. And the reason we want that is because Dela is up here, and we're going to give her the Pendant, and then we'll say farewell. And she gave us a Celestial Lotus. Now, I love these things, because they let you flip set items. So with this, I can change a, a set item, let's say this one, the Jewel of the Royal Crown, to any other level 50 set. Um, yeah, they're really valuable. Don't spend them at low levels. Hold on to all of them. Alright, we're at an hour and 17. We're just going to go a little long today. I'm going to kill Korvac. Um, I can get through this area decently quickly, I think. Oh, actually. I'll be right back, guys. Just just hold that thought. got to see a man about a dog. Actually, I've got to see this man about this red. And as long as I'm here, you may as well buy all of this stuff. What was that helmet? No. Wait. Yeah, no. And there is a bank here, so bank it. There we go. Actually, as long as I'm here, I'll turn these other quests in as well. Why not? Well, these other quests. I'll turn this other quest in. Fascinating. <laughs> okay, back. Back into the temple. Or the tomb, rather. So at the end of this tomb, we have to fight, uh, not Korvac himself, but... Oh, wrong way. I'm probably going to get lost in here and spend way too much time. Um, at the end of this section, we have to fight Father Kaiman. And then at the end of... Or past Father Kaiman, we blow the door down, we go into the Eldritch Realm, and we'll fight Korvac himself. So that'll be fun. So remember to grab my dynamite here. Uh, there is a devotion shrine in here as well, so keep your eye open for that. I think, yeah, it's looking like it's going to be on the next floor, though. There we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and speed this up a little bit. Don't really want to do hour and a half long episodes. Um, but uh, I think I will this time. But I don't want to go hugely over it either. Alright. 
right, where is, uh, not Turgon. What's this guy's name? Brother, is it Brother Sagarius? I think so. I think I've gone the wrong way again. Ah, uh, no, there's... There's a devotion shrine over there. Yeah, there he is, Brother Sagarius. Take care of him. Sundered? Oh no! Sundered again? I think that's something on the floor I'm standing in. Uh, let's just pick all this up. Now I did see something fancy drop there. Um, may have been an Aether Cluster. It was that same red color. I don't think any of this is going to be that color, so... That's probably what it was. Anyway. Let's be on our way here. Here's my Devotion Shrine. Looks like we're going to have a fight on our hands. Which I'm okay with. Because I bought the damage. Alright, Devotion Point... Achieved? Yep. This is definitely not something you should be doing. <laughs> Don't spend your Devotion Points while you're being attacked. Here we go. Next floor. Now this should be... Yep, this is Father Kaiman. Now, things you want for Father Kaiman. One, you need fire resistance. Two, as much armor as you can get your hands on. And three, as much physical resistance as you can get your hands on. He does a lot of fire damage. He does a lot of physical damage. Um, yeah, make sure you're resistant to those things. The other thing you really, 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 really pretend I said really another ten more times here. You really do not want to leave melee range with him. Uh, if you try and run away from him, he will basically leap slam onto your face or your back. And it does a ton of damage. So, there we go. I've had the loot off for a little bit, so I missed out on a bunch of it. But, uh... I'm not going back. Anyway, here's the Eldritch Gate. And here's the Eldritch Realm. And we're coming up on Kaiman himself. Now, Kaiman himself does every damage type except Chaos, I think. I think that's true. Uh, but regardless, you want to have your entire build under control by the time you get to him. Um, he is going to do a lot of damage. He is going to sunder. He is going to spend a lot of time talking, which is incredibly rude because I'm trying to talk. Um, but yeah, he does... I want to say it's mostly fire and uh, fire and lightning damage, but he do definitely does other damage types as well. And he's going to do a lot of them. He will sunder at various points. And summon friends at various points. You really just want to have your entire build under control. Let's put it that way. The other thing, it's definitely worth considering. Uh, maybe not so much on normal. But if you're doing ultimate Corvac for the first time. Um, or even, you know, not the first time. But you're actually worried about dying. Um, actually, you know what, let, let me just do it. Um, head back to a blacksmith. And just make yourself some royal jelly potions, whatever you've got. Um, I probably, for normal, you probably only have one. Um, alright, I've got three for some reason. But these are all regen, which, for this build, regen is, it's gold, realistically. Um... Just make one of each. Uh, I've already got that one, so we don't need the bomb. But the essence here, 8% extra health, sure. Why not? The extract, well, that's energy regen. But I do struggle with energy regen, so absolutely. We'll neck one of those as well. Um, we'll go ahead and sell this stuff too. The other thing you can do is you can check the first page here on a lot of these. Friendly. Stoneheart oil here is shield block. Slith blood tincture is not amazing. You can get other oils. Um, 
I'm not going to reset my my portal, but you can go check the other um, faction vendors. Um, let's actually go check the three in here. And they've all... Oh, these guys don't have it. They've got the movement moves. Okay. Most of them will have some sort of oil, some sort of tincture. I'm just going to use these. I'm not going to go fishing. Um, it is what it is. I think that will be more than enough. Um, just picked up like 800, 900 hit points and a bunch of regen. So we're up to 1600. This is all the time. If we get low and somehow manage to trigger this, that's another 130 plus whatever percentage we have on top of that regeneration. Uh, we're going to be fine. Crit damage, offensive ability. I think... Maybe I don't need more cunning after this, actually. Offensive ability. 0% chance to crit. Okay, never mind. I take it back. <laughs> Alright, let's go kill this boss before these potions run up. All right, here he comes. So as soon as he hits the ground, I'm going to throw thermite mines at him. And he should go down pretty quickly here. He's got a lot of elemental damage being piled on him right now. I've got a couple of thermite mines. I've got the, the whirly boys. This is really the only thing you even want to really worry about dodging. Um, Actually, sorry, the meteors are the things you want to dodge. But realistically, if you're doing enough damage like this build is, you generally can just kill him, if that makes sense. Like this here, I'm not going to really dodge it. And it's fine. Here we go, last phase. Face like a walking flashlight, this guy. <laughs> Face only a mother could love. And down he goes. So this last phase here is... A Hello? You're supposed to be dead, mate. There you go. Um, the last phase there... Actually, he does a decent amount of damage, so... I saw a person just there. What happened? Anyway, balance must be maintained, XP must be gained, and these loot chests must be opened. Not that I'm expecting to find anything amazing. I'll probably get an, an Eldritch Essence. Um, what else? Maybe a Celestial Lotus? Eldritch Essence, yeah, there we go. I think the uh, the quest, when I turn it in, will give me one of those. Uh, Glyph Tome. Great. Amazing. Love it. I'd love to have two of them. There we go. Uh, that is the end of Forgotten Gods. Completed the entire thing in uh, an hour and 28 minutes. Let's go turn these in. Conclave of the Three. Let's one manuscript. Oh, this is the... Uh... Yeah, we'll do that one later. Actually, I'm probably going to skip that. Let's be honest. Here we go. Korvac is no more, and we do get a Celestial Lotus, and also Veil's Edge, which, eh. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's definitely not very good either. Uh, Helmet, Ancient of Thorns, nope. Alright, there we go. So... I'm going to call that the end of this episode, so I'd like to thank you all very much for watching once again. See you in the next one, where we will either start Ultimate or uh, work towards it, but uh, we're pretty much done with Normal. So yeah, thanks for watching, see you in the next one, and goodbye for now.